Welcome to the second episode of our beginner access tutorial. It's pedal to the metal as we turn simple box diagrams into awesome query results. So buckle up, Buttercup, and let's start flexing those access muscles. Hello everyone, welcome to GOAT. So nice of you to join me. My name's Jeremy. Today we're going to be going over the second episode of the beginner tutorial for access which is talking about tables and we're going to get into queries just a little bit we're going to really start to harness the power of the database so if you find this video helpful like subscribe comment if you have any kind of questions i monitor the questions myself and i'll answer every one of them so let's go ahead and get started now as a reminder this is episode two so if you have not seen episode one check the description out for this video to go watch the first one. In episode one, we went through some simple table setup and we set up four tables, table authors, table books, table genres, table locations. Now it doesn't matter if you don't have the same entries as I do, but you should know how to set up the relations between those tables. For instance, in the table books, we actually set up a couple of foreign keys by using the lookup wizard in Access. So you're probably thinking, so what's the big deal so far if we're doing this in Access and we're making all these tables, can't we do something similar in Excel? Sort of, kind of, but you'll see in a moment where they start to differ. So I'm gonna switch over. Here's what I did in Excel. I made a location table. This is an actual table, a genres table, and then I made a table of books. Now in these columns, you'll notice what I did is I actually used the data validation to look up these tables over here. So for genre, it's looking up the genres table. So let's say I pick cooking and then later on in the genre, I add something like, I don't know, nature. I can actually go back in here and it is automatically updated to nature. So again, you're asking yourself, well, we can do this in Excel. Why do we need access? Oh, no, no, no. So the power of queries in a database in access, this isn't the same as Power Query in Excel. Power Query does not use SQL and it may give you certain results, but using the database engine of access with SQL, which yes, is a language, SQL, will enable us to do some really rad things. And so I'm gonna show you how this works in access. Now access has a query designer. It's very easy to use and how you get to it is you go to the top of the ribbon, you click create, then you click query design. Don't do query wizard. We're just gonna skip to design and you're gonna learn really quickly how to do this. Now, depending on your version of Access, you have you may have one or more uh, windows over here to the right. So let's let's remove this real quick. You may have add tables. You may have a properties window here. You don't really don't need any of those. You can keep them open if you want. I like to close those, and then I like to get my tables from over here. So a query is nothing but just a question of the data in the database. So let me show you a very simple one. So right now we have our table genres sitting over here on the left. I'm just gonna click and drag and put that in my query designer. And you'll notice that it's gonna show all the fields that we have in table genres and the star. So that star means select everything so you don't have to do each field because some tables get very large with lots of fields. So I'm gonna double click that star and it's gonna put down here table genres.star. Now if I click the run button, make sure we're in select mode, which is getting data. If I click run, it looks exactly like I just opened table genre. So here's table genre. Let me change the color so that you can kind of tell the difference. Okay, here's the table genre table, and this is the query. Now the query is simply pulling the same data that table genres is, because if we go back to our designer, remember from episode one, you can right click, go to design. You can click down here. There's this um, protractor and ruler looking thing. All we're doing in this query is pulling in all of the fields from table genres. That's a very basic query. So we can control less. Now for queries, I like to start with QRY and then the name of the query, what it's given me. So right now we're going to name it query genres. So you're probably thinking big deal. What's the big deal with this? We're just getting started. So let's go back over to our query here. Now let's close it out for right now. We're gonna to go to table genres, go to design view. We're gonna add another field called score. And it's gonna be a number. So this is kind of a likability score from one to five. Now we're going to go to data sheet view and I'm just gonna score these. I like horror, I save, yeah, sure, sci-fi, Christianity, yeah, cooking, yeah, and programming, I like that. Oh, five. Now then, I've given them a score. 
Let's open Query Genres to Design View, and you'll notice that score shows up in our table here. We modified the design of the table, and now because we're using table genres in this query, it's in here, and because we chose the star, if I hit the run up here, I'm going to get a score column. I know you're not very impressed. Let's just keep on going. So this first trick I'm gonna show you is called a parameterized query, where we enter in a parameter, and then it shows us the results. I don't use these very often, but I just wanna show you that they're available. So down here in this field, these are the fields of our query. I'm gonna type score. And then in the criteria row right here, I'm going to do a greater than or equals to an in bracket type enter minimum score, close bracket. Now look what happens when I hit run. I get this enter parameter value window, enter minimum score. So if I enter four and hit okay, the results I get are only four or higher. Now you, you may notice this weird field. That's because we already have a table genres.score field. So let's not show that. And now let's run it for, there we have it. And you can program this to be equal to the score. So equals enter score. So what if I was looking for just the score two genres, sci-fi, there we go, etc. That's something you can do in a query. Again, I don't typically use it just like that. However, that starts to show you some of the power of the query. And you have to remember these queries are not data saved in the database. They're looking at data that's already there. So I can make 50 different queries about the table genre or the table authors or the table books. I'm not replicating the data in those tables. I'm only making queries that's looking at the data that's already in the table in many different ways. So single table queries are pretty cool, but let's make something a little more complex. So let's close query genres. We're gonna to go to create, query design, and now I'm going to drag table books over. Now, if you remember, when we were setting up table books, we had foreign keys pointing to other tables. What does that mean? You're about to see. So we have a foreign key to the location table. Whoa, look at this line, and a foreign key to the genre table. So let's bring our genre in here. Ah, pretty sweet. What does that mean? These lines here are telling us that this is a many to one relationship. So the there's only one genre entry over here. It could appear many times in the table books. Although you, the books only get one genre, in the entirety of the table books, these genres might appear multiple times. That's, that's what this means. Now, what happens if I do this? I do a star for table books, and I don't pick any other field from these tables. What happens when I run it? Ah, pretty cool. So I get my listing of books here. Okay, pretty neat. You don't sound impressed. We'll change that soon. So let's go ahead and save this query books. Now we can go ahead and close query books for the moment. So let's play the what if game. What if your boss comes to you and says, I don't like fantasy spelled that way. I want to end in a Z and then I want you to update all the books that show fantasy to say fantasy. Okay, well, first we're going to have to change table genre. So let's switch over to our monitor. We're going to go to table genres, just open it. Now here are our entries for table genre. They want fantasy, I guess they will get fantasy. Now my question to you is, will we need to go to our table books and change our fantasy entry? No, we will not. This is the power of relational databases is because we did a lookup in episode one, check it out below, we will not need to. So let's close this, let's switch back to right monitor. Now I'm going to go to query books and check this out. I did not have to do any updates and it is pulling the Fanta Z because I changed it in the table genre. And again, I went to table genre and I changed the title of that. And so this link automatically updates with that new word. Pretty neat, huh? So you may be thinking, well, I can do that in Excel, Jeremy. If you can, 
please comment below because I can't figure it out. So let's switch over to our trusty monitor. Here's the Excel worksheet we had before. So let's get rid of this entry in this table. So here's our table of books. And look, Dark Tower is fantasy. What if I go here and I change fantasy? Notice this is not relational data. This fantasy does not update. Now I know there are some functions we could run that would check all of these versus all of these and point out what's wrong. And then maybe we could do some VBA code. But the point remains that the access database is, is automatic. We've already set up that relation and that relation is going to be maintained. Um, why and how it works, I can show you in another episode, but right now we're just going for the basics. We've got one more trick up our sleeve though. So popping over to our monitor, we're back into the query books. Now notice when I first made this query, I only selected all the fields from books. Well, notice that we have this score here for genres. I can bring in this related data because again, here's the relational link from genres. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking at books and then I bring in the score because that score is related to the genre and the genre is related to the book. I can therefore get the score of the book. Pretty neat. Now, this is not limited to, we can, we can go crazy with this. So for instance, locations, let's go to our locations table. Let's go to design view and I'm going to add a field called locked. Yes, no. So basically, is this location locked or not? Um, let's say my work desk is locked and my Kindle is locked. So we can close that table. So we've updated the data in the table to indicate that Kindle and work desk are locked. Now let's go back to query books and go to design. Oh, look at that. Our locked field is here. So now I can bring in our locked field from table locations and now my book query is this. I'm starting to learn lots and lots more about my books, not just what was originally in the tables, but even if I add information to those other tables and they're related, I can pull that information in. And I don't have to always pull in all the fields. So that's the awesomeness of queries. So let's go back to our monitor and I'll show you this. So remember again, we're not replicating data, we're just looking at the data that's already there. So I'm gonna close query books, I'm gonna save. Now I'm gonna go query design and I'm gonna make a simple query where I just bring in, oops, sorry, not query, although we could do that. I'm just going to bring in my table books and all I care about is the title and whether it's a locked location, which is belongs to my location field. So let's do books. And is it locked? Yes, no. There we have it. There's our results. And I can make as many of these as I want. As a matter of fact, let's go back here. The criteria for locked has to equal true. And so now I can say, give me a, ooh, wait, did we not? Oh yeah, we only locked one location. Yep, that's, so let's, let's look at the location just to make sure we're, I can move this column over here. Okay, Mere Christianity is on my Kindle and it is a locked Kindle. So now I can save this query as query locked books. And again, I have not replicated the data. I've only made a query that filters out that data and gives me exactly what I'm looking for. The title of the book, where it is, and whether it's a locked location, which is true here. I could even unhide that because I know this is a, these are locked books. And so now here's my list of locked books. If we were making other book entries, so Dark Tower Part 2, um, let's say it's in the Kindle and it's fantasy as well. Now, because it's on the Kindle and we know the Kindle's locked, what do you think query locked books? It came up with a Dark Tower Part 2. Pretty rad. That is it for today's episode. I hope so much it helps you experiment, experiment, experiment. Make a fresh database. You can't go wrong, make some tables, make copies of the database you already have with your tables and just make queries and see how they work. Like, follow, subscribe, part three coming soon. Thank you, God bless.